Lesson 46. Hello again and happy holidays. I'm here in a park in Worthington, Ohio, not too far from my home. It's about uh, 37 degrees out and it's actually uh, Christmas Eve afternoon. At any rate, I thought we'd begin the year out with a lesson on light meters. Got an email from Bill and uh, he thought that a lesson on light meters would be a good idea and I agreed. So what I have here is a couple different ones. Uh, this one here is a Siconic L308S digital light meter, a more modern type. And then over here is the old analog classic Luna Pro F, which I've had for at least 30 years now. So we're going to use both these meters and uh, try to show you how to use them properly and make your exposures better uh, than the, um, well hopefully better, than the ones that you get in your in-camera meter. So here we go. If you aren't exactly sure what a light meter is or how it works, don't feel too bad. This is a piece of equipment that is typically found in the hands of professionals and serious photographers who want more control over their photography with regard to determining exposure. The irony is that all of you have probably already worked with light meters since some variation of one has been built into most handheld cameras that have been manufactured in the last 60 years or so, unless they're the kind that require an external light meter for determining exposure. The job of a camera's built-in light meter is to measure the amount of reflected light striking the camera sensor or film in order to give you proper exposure for a scene. Without it, your shots would most likely be either over or underexposed because you'd otherwise have no information with which to adjust shutter speed and aperture in the proper combination in order to achieve proper exposure. You may recall in Lesson 22, Setting Exposure Using the Mode Dial, that we spent quite a bit of time demonstrating how the light meter works inside a camera by observing the digital readouts inside the viewfinder. We learned that once you set the ISO, the light meter in turn considers the sensor of film sensitivity while measuring the quantity of light entering the lens, which in turn influences the relationship between shutter speeds and aperture readings for that ISO setting. So to say that light meters are important would be an understatement. Although this lesson focuses primarily on handheld light meters, it's worthy to mention that the ones found in your DSLRs are always at work doing their thing, whether you have your mode dial set on auto, shutter speed or aperture priority, or manual. The meter is always there reading the light, entering the lens, and displaying the results in your viewfinder in the form of shutter speed and f-stops. Because it works quietly in the background, we rarely give it much thought until we realize that our shots are coming out too light or too dark. Then, we start thinking about what the problem may be. So you may be asking yourself, why have an external light meter if you already have one built into your camera? Well, there are a number of reasons why. One, the meter in your camera can only measure reflected light, which isn't always the most accurate way to determine exposure. Some scenes can be more accurately determined by use of an incidental light reading instead of reflected. Incidental light is the light actually falling on the subject, as opposed to light being reflected off the subject. You must keep in mind that when your camera's internal meter is measuring the light reflected off a scene, that this is often just an average reading of the entire scene, depending on how you've set your camera. Reflected light readings are based on the luminance of light that would be reflected from an object that is a middle gray, or more specifically, an 18% gray. Most scenes are not going to be middle grays and are often a combination of lighter and darker values. Therefore, some parts of the scene will be over or underexposed using this method. An incidental light reading doesn't solve the problem, but it does allow you to record the quantity of light as it falls on your most important component of the scene. Another advantage to an external light meter is for measuring flash, providing that the flash meter mode is included with that meter. Most light meters have this option, and we learned in Lesson 25 on flash photography, this is the only way to determine exposure for studio flash setups. If you recall, to use a meter in flash mode, you set the ISO and shutter speed on the meter, then place the meter close to the subject being photographed and fire the flash. This results in an incidental light reading that will give you the proper aperture for that flash setup. Getting back to the original question, because an external light meter allows you to take both reflected and incidental light readings, it has a clear advantage over your camera's built-in meter. Beginning with the Siconic meter, I'll now show you its controls and how to use them. This meter has four modes, and once you've chosen a mode, you can raise or lower the settings with the up or down button shown here. The top button clears the memory and readies the meter for taking a light reading. 
The mode already selected here is the daylight mode. Click the mode button and you get the EV or exposure value mode. Next is the flash mode and finally the flash mode while using an attached sync cord to the flash unit. ISO is set by pressing down and holding the ISO button while using the up or down buttons on the side to adjust it accordingly. Always remember to perform this very important first step or your readings will be off. Finally, the spherical diffuser or lumisphere is always slid away from the meter cell for reflective readings and remains over it for incidental readings. Now let's say that I want to take a reflected light reading of this scene in the park. I'm standing at camera position, have set the mode to daylight, and slid the lumisphere away from the meter cell. I then aim the meter at the scene, press the measuring button, and take a reading. The meter tells me that one thousandth of a second the aperture would be set to f5.6 or more precisely at f5.69 so I put my camera's mode dial on manual and set the exposure accordingly. If I wanted to shoot at a different shutter speed or aperture I'd simply press the up or down button on the side to find out the right combination of shutter speed and aperture as desired. For example one five hundredth of a second would be set at f8 one two hundred and fiftieth of a second would be set at f11 one one hundred and twenty-fifth of a second at f16, one sixtieth of a second at f22, and so on. By the way, you can set the f-stop increments of reading on this meter by turning the unit off, pressing the mode button and holding it down while pressing the power button, then press the mode dial to choose whether you want full, one-half, or one-third stop increments. Now, let's suppose that the sign in this scene is the most important component and we want to make sure it gets exposed properly. It could be snowy outside or darker than usual, so an in-camera meter reading would most likely result in an inadequate exposure for the sign. You therefore decide to take an incidental light reading of the sign in order to read the amount of light falling on it. You walk up to the sign, make sure to slide the lumisphere of the meter over the meter cell, and hold the meter just in front of the sign so that the diffuser is facing the camera. Then press the measuring button and release, then read the results. You may decide to take readings in areas around the sign as well, just to get a better fix on how much the light changes within the scene. When you're finished taking your incidental light readings, it's a good idea to compare them to the reflected light readings made in your camera. You may see as much as a stop or two difference between the two sets of readings. Another thing you could do is use your light meter to take a reflected reading of the sign up close for comparison since this would be more accurate than an overall reading from your camera. Some meters have accessory spot meter attachments for this purpose, so you can take spot measurements from a distance. Once you've decided on the exposure setting to use, set your camera accordingly. If by now you're asking yourself, why go to all this fuss to determine exposures, the answer is self-evident. The more you know about light and its characteristics, the more you'll raise the bar in your knowledge of photography. You've also got to keep in mind before there was digital photography, film was used exclusively, and the results of the shoot weren't known until the film was processed well after the fact. Using a light meter helped assure the photographer that his exposures were right on the money. Using a light meter in flash mode to take incidental flash readings is a bit different than taking ambient light readings. You have two mode choices for metering flash, depending on how you want to take your readings. If you want to simply fire your flash unit manually to take your readings, then set the mode on flash as seen here. If you want the flash to fire the moment you press the measurement button, then attach your sync cord to the sync terminal and set the mode to flash C mode. After setting the ISO, make sure you set your shutter speed on the meter to the same speed you're going to shoot at, keeping in mind that you must use a shutter speed that will be in sync with the flash, which depends on your particular camera. As with any incidental reading, you always place the diffuser over the meter cell and take the reading from where your subject is standing and aim the diffuser directly toward the camera. Press the measurement button, read the results, and then set your aperture accordingly. For more about shooting flash, see Lesson 25. The Gossen Luna Pro F is an older style meter that incorporates what is called a null meter readout system. At first glance, this baby seems absolutely overwhelming with its rather confusing array of numbers and hash marks. But don't let any of that scare you off. Except for the null method for reading results, this meter operates in the same manner as the newer digital light meters. As with the Sakonic, there's a diffuser dome that slides over the meter cell. 
There are two buttons on the side. The top one is the button pressed to take a reading, and the bottom one allows you to choose either the ambient light or flash modes. You set the ISO by grasping the inner ring of the dial and turning it to the sensitivity you're using. Note that ASA is the term that was used for film speed until ISO later took its place. Once you set the meter for ambient reading and slid the dome away from the meter cell, point the meter toward the scene, press the measurement button, and release. Then grasp the outer ring of the dial and rotate it until you've lined up the zero setting with the needle. Then take a look at the window on top of the ring to determine what shutter speed aperture reading combination will give you proper exposure. For example, a shutter speed of 1 1,000th of a second would require an aperture reading of f5.6 and 2 thirds. 1 500th of a second would be f8 and 2 thirds. 1 250th of a second would be f11 and 2 thirds, and so on. If you recall in Lesson 10, all about exposure, we discussed how each time you change the shutter speed one stop, the aperture also changes one stop to compensate for the gain or loss of light, and vice versa. The light meter is an excellent illustration of how this principle actually works in practice. At any rate, you would then set your camera to manual mode and adjust your shutter speed and aperture accordingly once you've chosen the exposure combination you want to use as you did with the Siconic. Taking incidental light readings with the Luna Pro F follows the same exact procedure, the only difference being that the sphere diffuser must be over the meter cell and the dome faces the camera from its position in front of the subject being metered. Flash readings with Luna Pro F is a bit different, however. The first thing you must do is push the mode button so it's in the flash position before taking a reading. You may recall from Lesson 25 on flash that shutter speed has little effect on exposure while using flash, as long as it's in sync with the flash. For this reason, in order to read the Luna Pro F meter in flash mode, you simply read the aperture that appears directly under the red flash icon after you fired the flash and nulled the reading to zero, as seen here. Proper exposure, therefore, for this particular reading would be f22 and a third. In summary, although light meters aren't a necessity for the casual photographer, they are a handy addition to anyone who wants to have more control over their exposure calculations. Furthermore, if you use studio flash or want to be able to measure the output of any external flash device, a flash meter is an absolute must. I also want to mention that there are other uses and applications for light meters that I didn't cover in this lesson partly for time's sake, and partly because those applications aren't necessarily relevant for still photography. For example, light meters are indispensable for cinematographers determining exposures on movie sets, as well as for videographers working on high-end projects. Now I'd like to introduce you to the first of what I hope will be a useful added feature to the show, called Photo Tip of the Day. Today's tip is how to use exposure compensation if your shots are consistently too light, too dark, or if you just want to customize exposures for certain shooting scenarios, such as bright snow scenes. Exposure compensation allows you to basically tell your camera to purposely over or underexpose settings beyond what your camera meter is telling you to use. For example, I mentioned earlier how shots tend to be underexposed when it's snowy. So you could correct false meter readings by telling the meter to give you settings that are one or two stops over what it normally reads. Basically what you're doing is fooling the camera into thinking that a bright white scene is actually a middle gray. The first step to exposure compensation is to decide how much more or less light you want to compensate for. Let's say you want to make all of your shots come out one full stop more than the meter would normally dictate. On my D70, I would locate the exposure compensation button and adjust it using the thumb wheel as seen here. You can over or underexpose shots up to five stops either way on this camera. Once you set it to a plus one, all subsequent exposures will be one stop brighter automatically. If you find that your shots are still too dark or too light, simply tweak the exposure compensation value until you get it just right. Well, that's about it for this lesson on light meters. I'm looking forward to hearing your suggestions and comments about this show in the coming year. Until next time, Happy New Year!